Uh, welcome to uh, this MOOC on basics of noise and its measurement. Today is our first uh, day of the lectures in a series of lectures. This particular course is going to run for a 8 week period. Each week we will have uh, 6 modules. Each module will be something about 18, 20, 25 minutes long. And, uh, in each of these uh, weeks, we will cover a very large uh, or not necessarily very large, but a comprehensive suite of topics which relate to this particular MOOC. Uh, <coughs> as uh, you see, this uh, uh, the title is Basics of Noise and its Measurement. And before we start digging deep into uh, the details of this course, just wanted to uh, share my understanding of why is measurement of noise important. Well, uh, as we turn out, as it turns out that uh, noise is uh, becoming increasingly a very important parameter in terms of uh, our uh, lifestyle, influencing our lifestyle. Uh, you uh, get up in the morning, you go out you are on the road, you hear a lot of noise, you go to your kitchen and you use a mixie or a fruit processor, it generates noise. You have a refrigerator, uh, there could be a less noisy refrigerator, a more noisy refrigerator. You have a washing machine, it generates noise. You have aircraft, ships, uh, rockets and whatever, uh, you have a lot of noise. and. In general, the overall level of noise in our country is uh, going up very significantly. So, if you are involved in uh, manufacture and design and production of uh, uh, consumer goods, you would like your consumer goods to be less noisy because that makes them, uh, uh, you know, competitively uh, better. If you are involved in design of uh, and running of uh, complex uh, transportation systems such as aircrafts or railways. Again, from the standpoint of, uh, from the side of the government as well from the standpoint of the users of this, there is an increasing desire to reduce the noise levels which are generated by trucks, by buses, by cars, by trains, by planes and so on and so forth. So, what this course does is that it looks at this overall comprehensive picture and uh, as a step one, it gives you a fundamental understanding of what is sound. So, we will cover a range of uh, very basic uh, themes uh, uh, related to sound. And uh, then we will proceed in terms of uh, how do we measure sound, how do we measure noise, and how to analyze the signals which we have measured. So, before we start going into the details, I would like to share some of the resources. In this particular context, uh, the, uh, these particular resources may turn out to be very helpful uh, for you uh, as you dig deeper into this particular area. So, in, con in this particular context, you may also want to look at some of the video courses and web based courses on acoustics and sound propagation through media, uh, which are being offered by NPTEL. So, you have to go to nptel.ac.in and uh, look for these courses and uh, I have developed 40 video courses and uh, another 40 web based lectures on sound propagation through media. And if you have the time to go through them and uh, learn a little bit more about acoustics and sound propagation, it will be really helpful for you in context of this course. But uh, as a prerequisite, uh, you do not have to necessarily learn all those things which I have taught in acoustics and sound propagation through media to be a part of this course. But if you learn that, then it will certainly be helpful. Then uh, of course, I am doing this MOOC on acoustics, so we will generate a lot of uh, supplementary material. But then there is also a virtual lab on acoustics. And uh, we at uh, IIT Kanpur, we have generated this, created this laboratory. And uh, this is the URL for this, uh, 
for the lab. It is not a very uh, imaginative URL, but uh, right now this is what we have. Hopefully, uh, in next few weeks, we will be able to change the URL to something more meaningful. But if you go to this particular website, http slash slash 202.3.77.82, you will be able to access a large number of acoustics tools, software tools, using which you can generate a lot of files. If you want to create a 400 hertz tone, uh, you can generate that. If you want to generate a uh, sweep signal, a hash signal and so on and so forth, you should be able to do that. If you have a particular signal and if you want to do FFT of it, you should be able to do that at this uh, website. So, this uh, feel free to use it, there is no charge for it and the more people use it, the better it will be in terms of utilization of this uh, resource. And then uh, finally, we have Dhwani Labs. Uh, which is again uh, uh, labs where we do a lot of research in area of sound and acoustics and noise and uh, this is the URL for that. So, if you go here you will learn uh, uh, something more about what kind of resources we have uh, in terms of people, in terms of equipment, in terms of other tools and you should be able to capitalize on these resources. And if you have any questions and if you had research uh, interest in uh, this particular area of noise and vibrations it grows, then uh, uh, you are welcome to use all these facilities. So, now let us look at the structure of our course. <coughs> so, we will have a series of lectures or uh, brief lectures if you may and each lecture will be something like 20-25 minutes and this will be uh, supplemented by some additional material. So, with each lecture we will also have a series of uh, presentations, uh, PowerPoint presentations. So, you are free to look at those and at the end of uh, each assignment, uh, this each uh, lecture we will have uh, uh, an assignment and by and large most of the assignments which you will have to finish would be multiple choice uh, format. So, they will be objective questions of MCQ type. So, if you have understood the concept then uh, you should be able to answer them uh, these questions uh, in a MCQ format. Uh, I am certain that as we proceed into the course. Uh, you will have uh, doubts and questions and uh, need for clarification of specific uh, um, concepts. So, there will be tutors and of course, I will be available through for online interaction. So, you should be able to pass on your questions and interact with the tutors and also me through this online interaction methodology. And as the course draws to a close, there will be a final examination and uh, that will help us evaluate the performance of all of you uh, on this course. So, that is going to be the overall structure of uh, this course and uh, I look forward to having you on uh, this particular course. Now, let us look at uh, briefly uh, about what is it that we are going to discuss in this particular course. So, of course, there is going to be an introductory part and uh, after that what we will do is that we will look at some of the key terminologies because a lot of uh, terminology of uh, noise and acoustics is uh, somewhat specific like we have terms like octaves and decades and decibels and L E Q and power intensity and uh, it is important that uh, we understand these terms uh, accurately band, bandwidth, uh, what else, uh, weighting, A weighting filters. So, it is important that uh, you understand this terminology clearly and uh, explicitly and uh, that will help you uh, discuss about acoustics and noise and noise related measurements with your peers in uh, a very clear and objective way. Uh, once uh, uh, we have discussed the terminology, then we will proceed uh, to 
look at the very fundamental uh, mechanics of uh, sound. How does sound propagate from point A to point B? And that is governed by a differential equation known as the wave equation. So, uh, understanding the basics of uh, this wave equation is uh, important uh, in this course, because uh, not necessarily in the sense that you have to be super experts in solving these differential equations, but rather uh, because uh, a lot of times if you understand what the wave equation is, then you would be able to relate the underlying mechanics associated with this wave equation with the several principles of noise measurement, because there are things like impedance and uh, the concept of impedance comes directly out of uh, the wave equation, because we take uh, the ratios of uh, uh, pressure and velocity and then uh, as a function of the pressure and velocity, we define something known as impedance. So, how are these things related? Uh, it's uh, um, uh, and how do they relate to some of these terms which we will be measuring? Uh, it's important that we understand the wave equation. So once we are done with the understanding the wave equation, we'll use it. Uh, we'll cover this wave equation over a period of two or at the most three hours. Then we will actually proceed to actually measuring sound. So. In that particular context, we will look at a large range of uh, equipments, microphones, data acquisition systems, analog to digital converters, what types of cables do we use, sound level meters and so on and so forth. And uh, we will look at all these uh, from a practical standpoint and in this lab we will also actually show you some of these uh, specific instruments and tools and familiarize you with the basic operating principles as well as specifications of these tools. So that uh, once you walk out of this MOOC after having successfully completed this course, you should be able to intelligently figure out what kind of measurements do you have to do and what kind of instruments uh, will be helpful in achieving your goals. So once that is done, then what so once you have a tool and you use this tool to record sound or noise if you may, then uh, you have to analyze all that information and uh, because most of the information you record is it, uh, it is in time domain. You bas basically measure pressure as a function of time or uh, velocity or volume velocity as a function of time and uh, once you record that, then you would like to extract a lot of other information which may be of interest. You may be uh, interested in trying to figure out uh, what is the energy level in a particular bandwidth or what is the sound pressure level in a at a particular frequency. So, what is needed at that stage is that you should have a uh, reasonable grounding in analyzing all the data which you have uh, acquired experimentally and all that analysis is uh, done through some mathematical methods and those are the mathematical methods which we will discuss in this particular course. Specifically, we will cover FFT or fast Fourier transform method and uh, how can we make FFT more accurate, what is the resolution of an FFT, uh, what is the maximum frequency which we can get once we FFT some data and so on and so forth. Then we will also look at uh, another tool known as the spectrogram and also the short term fast Fourier transform method. And once we are done with it, then we will learn a little bit more about how we can use these tools and these techniques for uh, different applications. Uh, and we will discuss some of these technical terms later which are shown on this particular PowerPoint. So, how can we apply these tools and techniques to free field measurements, to reverberant field measurements, to near field measurements, uh, how is the near field measurement different uh, fundamentally from a far field measurement and uh, what is the use of uh, something known as anechoic chamber, we will discuss that. 
what is weighting, uh, what are octave bands and so on and so forth. So, once we are done with this, then uh, we will continue our journey in the area of noise measurements and then we will learn to define and measure experimentally a very important uh, parameter or uh, yeah, a parameter which is a function of pressure and velocity and uh, this is known as impedance and uh, we will discuss uh, at least two different methods uh, to measure impedance. We will also describe the equipment which is used to measure impedance and actually de uh, give a demonstration of one of those equipments for impedance measurement. And then we will show that how we can use this uh, equipment to measure the noise absorption characteristics of different materials. For instance, you have a foam or a piece of cork which uh, you want that it should be able to absorb sound in an auditorium which you are designing. So, you would like to know that uh, for specific frequency bandwidth, let us say 100 to 200 hertz, 200 to 400 hertz, 400 to 800 hertz and so on and so forth, how much uh, noise this particular piece of foam or cork or felt or concrete or curtain it absorbs and uh, what we will teach you is how you can actually de do these measurements using this uh, impedance uh, related tools. Because then once you know how to do this, then you can calculate the absorption coefficients of these materials and th through some quick mathematical models actually design auditoriums which sound better. So, it will be in that sense fairly effective tool for you all. And then once we have done that, then you will be ready at that point of time to discuss and learn how are measurements made for uh, designing better public places. So, in public places what you want is that there should not be necessarily too long a reverberation time because that confuses people and also it should not be too short. So, there is always an optimum uh, level of reverberation time and how do you design public places uh, uh, from an acoustical standpoint, how do you design a classroom, a lecture hall, an auditorium. So, some very basics of that by uh, relying on some of the measurement techniques which you have, which you would be learning in this particular course. And then finally, we will look at some of the national as well as international standards as they relate to sound and noise and what kind of levels are permissible in specific areas, what kind of sound level uh, or noise level is permissible in a public area, in a uh, hospital, in an airport, uh, when inside a car or when a car goes by something there is something known as a pass by noise. So, what kind of standards do we have and uh, regulatory standards uh, as well as operational standards uh, which are important uh, uh, to look at as uh, you execute your responsibilities as a noise engineer or as a sound engineer or as an operations manager in your organization. So, that is uh, something we will be covering in this course. And uh, lastly, so once again I look forward to having you in uh, this course and uh, I am sure that uh, this will be a fun journey and uh, uh, it will be highly interactive and I do not think it will be uh, consuming an excessively large amount of time from your standpoint in terms of uh, learning, uh, but uh, I am fairly certain that you will find this course to be rewarding, enriching and something you will be learning which will be very useful and uh, rewarding from a practical standpoint. So, welcome to the course. and. Uh, uh, this completes the first module of this course and now we will proceed to the second module.